time off the revolutionary duties of a regimental soldier to explain to you the operations of a footlock rifle. I'd like to show you the basic implement of a revolutionary soldier on either side and in either regiment would be the flintlock rifle. This comprises a flint, just like an Indian would use for an arrowhead, the cock, what we would call the hammer now, the frizzen, there's an assortment of springs, and the trigger. In operation, the flint moves forward, strikes the frizzen, raises a series of sparks that ignite a pan full of black powder. This charge passes into the barrel and ignites the main charge. It's a very simple, very basic mechanism. It's been in use 200 years before the time of the revolution. It was invented by the French and perfected by the Germans. This is a rifle. The barrel has a series of grooves. The normal soldier in the time of the revolution would have used a musket, which is smooth. It's much faster to load, but it has a much smaller range. This was a long-range weapon used by people dressed as myself, who would be the forward van of the army, the scouts, the forward observers. We were mostly anti-Indian fighters. So let me take some time here to show you the operation. Rather than use the main horn to pour the primer charge, we used just a small amount, just enough to fill the pan. Now I'll give you a close-up look so you can see what it looks like, because when I'm at a distance you won't see this. This rifle is unloaded, but as always, I treat it as if it was loaded, and I'm very careful the direction I point the muzzle. Everyone should be. In operation, it is cocked. The frizzing is forward on the pan. It gives it some waterproofness, but in a rainstorm, it's not a very reliable weapon. So let me show you just the pan charge of a flintlock. Under the brim of your hat, that can be a very exciting event if you're not used to it. So now I will take the time to fully load. After the shot was fired, the soldier would take there's a small pick, clear that hole, it's a very small hole, and we have the powder measure. You never load directly from the horn because that, if it does have an ember in the barrel, is basically a hand grenade at your face level. So what you do is Pour some powder in the measure, transfer that to the barrel, for accuracy's sake, the ball is small, fairly loose in the bore, but what we take is a bit of cloth, there's the ball, a bit of cloth forms it tightly into the barrel, makes a good gas seal. Start that in a little ways. As you can see, this is a time consuming process. The musket has a great advantage in that they could form a paper cartridge ahead of time, have 60 or so of those ready in a belt pack. They could fire. A good soldier could get off five or six rounds a minute, which is fairly respectable. It takes me about a minute and a half to do this properly and accurately. That's why the rifle was used by the side troops. Now we want to drive that down onto the powder. Use a little bit of the rammer at a time so you don't snap it. It is just wood and fairly fragile. Once again, a little bit of priming in the pan. Now I'm ready to fire. And I will step back and give everybody a chance. one round and the process repeats. A good continental soldier could fire accurately perhaps 200 yards under this situation. This is very much a hunting gun developed by the Swiss and the Germans and was used by troops for long-range sniping. Thank you and have a good day.